rise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of Christ my Savior. Good morning. I'd like to welcome those that are watching this TV program this morning to stay with us and be blessed by the preaching of God's Word. In 1 Corinthians, the Bible says that God chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. The preaching of the gospel. Take your Bibles and open up to John's account of the gospel and chapter 15. It's always been... Since Jesus died and was buried and rose from the dead, according to the scriptures, and on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, it's always been that those who came to the Lord held Him high. They exalted Him. They showed reverence towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Not towards man. Man is not to be called reverent. Man is not to be called Father, as the Bible calls the only one Father in heaven, which is our, our God. But it's always been that they held the cause of Christ in reverence. The cause of Christ also deals with the setting up of His church. The church is the people who have heard the gospel, believed it, repented of their sins, and was baptized by immersion to have those sins washed away and to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Those who come up with that water grave of baptism, a new babe in Christ, desiring the sincere milk of the Word, as 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2 says, so that they could grow. The babies in Christ grow up to be mature adults in Christ. And there we have the church, the making up of the church. And the making of the, up of the church has some resemblance to the making up of any government. There are rules to go by. There are laws to go by. And there is leadership to go by, a government. And in the Lord's church, He has set up elders, bishops, overseers, shepherds of the flock, who are, is the highest office not only in the church, the kingdom of God, but it is higher than any office in the worldly business too. The elders in the church, in God's eyes, is the highest officer that you can, you can fill the position of. They hold the greatest above all responsibilities. And so does the evangelist. God, through His Son Jesus Christ, set this up. This is not made up of any man. This was made up by the Godhead. The Holy Spirit had a hand in it. And it's all written down in book form. The things that I tell you this morning are written down in God's book. And therefore we can go to God and see what He has to say about it. And so, God setting up His church, His kingdom, through His Son Jesus, has a way for people to come to Jesus, for people to... Uh, get into Christ and be a part of His church. And then, how to live faithfully and continually on until you die or until Jesus comes back. God has already have a way for us to do that. God has left no room for you and me to decide how we're going to accomplish that. God has already set it up. And when you and I decide that we're going to accomplish it some other way, we then begin to take away from God's Word and add unto God's Word. Both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, God stresses it's important that we do not take away from His Word or add unto it. Also, God has provided a plan for us being able to live under His rules, His commands, and have joy in doing it and help the help that we need to be faithful unto the end. He has not left us on our own. And he does, he does that through the helps that He gives us in His Word. You know, I'm not preaching this morning because that's because what every church does. I'm preaching this morning because God commands it. 
It's an instruction given by God. This is something that He wants to do every Sunday, every Sunday night. Whenever we have Bible study, in our case we have it on Wednesday night, He wants us to be instructed by the elders and the evangelists from His Word. And when He instructs us, He helps us through the Holy Spirit that we have when we were given to us when we were baptized into Jesus Christ. God, it says in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, that He has given us everything that pertains unto life and godliness through the knowledge of His Son. When we study and study and gain knowledge about Jesus, you and I are given the ability to know how to please God, to know how to serve Him in every way. And when we, when we make light of how God set His church, His kingdom up, we are dishonoring God. And we are losing the benefits that God gives us through His blessings, through knowing His Word, through being obedient to Him. We lose the blessings and the benefits that every Christian needs from God the Father. We live in a wicked and adulterous world. We live in a world that's dark and full of sin and wickedness. Yeah, I don't care if people say it, we... We need a crutch to lean on. I'm glad I have a crutch, and it's Jesus Christ. I need Him to lean on. When I live in this world, I can't do it by myself. I need Jesus. And my needing Jesus means that I have to study His Word and fill myself with His Word. I need to be in prayer to my God. And I need to be serving Him the way the Bible says, not the way I want to. And why, why do I say that? Because when I serve God the way the Bible says, He blesses me. He helps me. I get all the benefits from this life and in the next life. But when I don't do it the way God says, I lose those benefits. You see? When I study God's Word, I'm taking in spiritual food. And I become like that. The things that I say and the things I do verify that I've been studying God's Word. The things I say and I do verify that I haven't been studying God's Word. You see? What I take in is what I become like. Now we may not like to hear that, but that's what the Bible says. When we, what we take in is what we become like. And the question this morning for the church, I'm not talking to the world. They're lost in sin and they're going to go to hell if they do not repent of their sins and come to Jesus and do what He says. I'm talking about the church today because it's so important for every member of the church that Jesus died for to be full of God's Word, to be exemplifying Christ in their life, because it's so important for those who are not Christians yet. For those who have never came to Jesus yet. It's so important for them that they see Jesus in you and not you. Now, that sounds silly, doesn't it? Preacher, how can I not be me? I can tell you how you could not be you. is by studying God's Word and let Jesus have His way in your life. Fill yourself with Jesus through the Word and the more you do it, the more you become like Jesus Christ. You see? Through studying God's Word, we can do that. The more you study, the more you become like Jesus Christ. And that's what the world will see. That ought to be our goal as a Christian. To become more like Christ and less like the world. You know, it's been said that sometimes there's too, too much world in the church and not enough church in the world. Yeah, we have the responsibility in becoming more like Christ. And only you can do that. You see, the preacher can't do that and the elders can't do that. Only you can do that. It's my job to instruct you in this from the preaching and teaching of God's Word. I'm commanded to do that. When we read First and Second Timothy and Titus, I'm commanded to instruct you in the Word of God. I'm commanded to preach to you 
on the first day of the week. I'm commanded to do it. That's the only reason I do it. If it wasn't commanded for me to do it in there, I would not be up here this morning preaching the way that I am. You see? I'm commanded to do it. If it wasn't commanded for me to be here on the first day of the week to partake the Lord's Supper, then I would not do it. Well, what would you do, preacher? Well, I'd study in God's Word and see what it is that He wanted me to do. That's what I would do. You see? And that's where it is for every Christian. When we study God's Word, then we need to do what it says. I don't have a problem doing what the Bible says in most cases. Because when I study it, I become more like Christ. And when I study it, I enjoy it more. And when I study it, I love it. And I want more of it, you see. And there are many, 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 many Christians across the world. When they study God's Word, they love it that much. I love it better than my wife's fried chicken. I love it better than banana pudding, you see. I love the Word of God. Because it makes me more like Christ. I want to be more like Him. You see? That's the reason I've chosen John's account of the gospel in chapter 15, starting in verse 1. These are instructions for every Christian to be able to have the ability to do what God says. Serve Him in that manner. Yes. It cannot be done. Now listen up, folks. It cannot be done if you're not willing to make changes. It cannot be done. You see, I have to change. I have to make changes in my life in order to be able to accomplish that which God wants me to do. And if you're not willing to do it, you're not going to change. And the thing of it is, the Bible says that every person is going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account what they've done in the body, whether it be good or bad. Yeah, you're not going to escape, and neither am I. We're going to stand before the judge, King Jesus, and he's going to ask us, why didn't, I, why didn't you do what I told you on earth? Why didn't you do what the Bible said? Why didn't you do what the preacher, the evangelist, instructed you in doing? And you go tell him, well, I didn't want to change. Is it going to be worth going to hell and spend all eternity for? Is it going to be worth that? Yes, we as Christians, the word change means repentance. That's what the word repentance means. It means change. Or turning around. That's what repentance means. Change and turning around. We change our conduct towards the way we are living. The things we say and we do, how we act. And we turn away from that. And turn towards God. We, when we were baptized into Jesus Christ, we told God that I'm a babe in Christ now and I'm going to desire the sincere milk of the Word so that I can grow and become an adult Christian, mature in my faith, become more like you want me to be. That's what we told Him. We told Him we're going to do what He says. Are you doing that this morning, Christian? Let's look at chapter 15, starting in verse 1. Jesus said, okay, not no preacher. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. I want you to know this morning, that Jesus is the vine and we're the branch. Every Christian, I don't care who they are, is the branch. And there's two things that takes place in a branch. It either bears fruit and God purges it so it'll bear more fruit. In other words, the world can see in your life that you're growing and maturing in your faith. You truly believe the Bible, what God says. And then God, so God... Gives you the ability to bear more fruit. You begin to mature in your faith. You're excited about Jesus and the world can see that you can't wait to be with Jesus in heaven. You can't wait to leave this life, this wicked life, even though we have to leave loved ones and all the doom and gloom going around us. And I know because we all talk about 
all the bad news on, that's in the news. All the bad things that takes place in this life and how we don't like it. I'm telling you, we need to be excited to the point where we're willing to leave this life and to go be with Jesus. And that's what the world needs to see in us. Jesus never proclaimed one time when he was on this earth that I want to remain here longer than it's necessary. Jesus told God the Father in John chapter 17 that glorify him with the glory that he had from the beginning. Jesus was prepared to go back to be with his Father in heaven. And he expects you and me as Christians to prepare ourselves now to go be with him in heaven. If you don't do that, you'll be lost. You need to do it now. Don't wait till you get older and older and older. Don't wait till you say, well, there'll be a better time. Jesus expects you to do it right now. Submit yourself unto him. Give your all to him. Be the person that he wants you to be so that you can have the joys of heaven someday. Every branch that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. In other place it says, it's thrown into the fire and burnt. What about you, Christian, this morning? Are you a branch that's bearing fruit? Or is it not bearing fruit? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, starting about verse uh, 21, I think it is, 21 or 22, talking about the wise man, the foolish man. You can put woman there too. Jesus called the wise man the one that heard his words and did it. And built his house upon a rock. And when the floods came, the storms came, and beat upon that house, it fell not. It stood. The wise man. And then he said to the foolish person, the foolish person is the one that built their house upon the sand. When the storms came and beat upon that house, it fell, and great was the fall of it. Yes, what? Are you a branch? Are you bearing fruit or not? I think but this would be scary thought. As a Christian, and I'm not bearing fruit, the Bible already tells me that I'm going to be thrown into the fire. But there's joy in knowing that I am bearing fruit because he will purge me so I'll bear more fruit. That's a responsibility for us Christians. This is the basics. This is what every Christian needs to be doing. This is what you want to answer for when you stand before God. Verse 3. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. How are you clean? How are you clean? Well, first of all, if you've never came to Jesus, you're clean through the word. That's what draws you. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, the Bible says, Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. You are clean by the word. The word of God draws you to him. And the word of God, the teaching of the word of God helps you to know what you're doing and you decide to repent of your sins, be baptized, have those sins washed away. The Word does that. The power in God's Word does that. And you're clean through the Word. Once you become a Christian, the Word still keeps you clean through the power of the Word. Listen up. You may never have another chance to hear the truth. There's power in the Word, and the Word keeps you clean. And that's what he's talking about. Now you're clean through the Word which I have spoken unto you. The words of Jesus that I have spoken unto you this morning is that what keep, makes you and keeps you clean. Okay? You are not clean, my friend, if you're not studying God's Word in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah, I, I get up in the morning, look in the mirror, and say, hey, there's a pretty good guy. Okay? And, and probably I go to work, and, and, and it's probably what a lot of people at work think. But it doesn't matter what we think. What does God see? 
If we're not studying God's Word, He's already told us what He sees. Okay, we don't have to guess about it. We're not clean. Verse 4, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Are you abiding in Jesus? Is Jesus the source of your life? Is Jesus the source of your power? Is Jesus the source of your joy? Or is something else? He says... Abide in me and I in you. When we abide in Jesus, guess what? He says he'll abide in us. We need to ask ourselves the question, Christians, is Jesus abiding in me? Is the things that I say and do, does it show that Jesus is in me? The opposite of that is, if you abide not in me, I'll abide not in you. You see, if you're not abiding in Jesus, then Jesus isn't going to abide in you. And you cannot exemplify Him in your life. It's impossible. A branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Okay, so we got a tree branch. There's no vine, there's no tree stump or anything for it to be connected to. What's going to happen to that branch? going to die and rot and wither away. What about you, Christian? The Bible says, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except you abide in me. Just as that branch without the vine dies and rots and withers away, Christian friend, you will too. And I will too. That's what he's saying there. He said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He's very specific about that. He is the head of the church, which is his body. He is the vine. He is the king of kings and lord of lords. Not anyone else. He says, I am the vine, and ye, he's talking to the Christians, ye are the branches. You can't be anything else in the eyes of the Lord. You're the branches, and so am I. And he goes on to say, He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Now, we might have the mindset that I can do a lot of things. But in the eyes of God, those lot of things that you and I talk about don't amount to hill of beans. They will perish. They will not sustain you. But Jesus will. The Bible says, for without me you can do nothing. In the eyes of the Lord, if there's anything that's going to be in our life that's going to last eternally, without him we can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burnt. We know in the fall of the year we rake leaves and what have you and generally in the country if you can you uh, rake them in a pile and you burn them until they're gone. That's what he's talking about to Christian this morning my friend. You see I'm not just preaching on this here to be preaching a message. I'm telling you in the church it's possible that some of us are going to spend eternity in the lake of fire because... We will not abide in the vine, which is Jesus. And because of that, he will not abide in us. If we knew, if we knew that there was going to be some terrorists come today and set bombs in this building and we don't know where they're at, we wouldn't come to this building if we knew it. We wouldn't come to this building. We'd stay away from the fire. We'd stay away from the danger. But if we didn't know, we'd come here and there's a good chance we'd get blown up. But we can't use that for excuse today, my friend. The Bible tells us what's going to happen to us. 
when we do not abide in Jesus and Him in us. The Bible tells us already we know through the reading of our own selves, through the preaching and the teaching of it, we know the dangers of not studying God's Word, not being a part of it, not allowing Jesus to have His way in our life in every decision that we make and the things that we do. We know. We're without excuse. Not one of us can stand before the Lord one day and offer up anything that he'll be satisfied with. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them to cast them into fire, and they are burned. I don't know about you, my friend. I don't want to be in, in that fire and be burning. And I don't think you do either. That's why God instructs us right now. He gives us the time, the ability to make to change the situation and become what He wants us to be. God wants His children serving Him. God, when He looks down on His church, both men and women in the church, He looks down on them and He wants them to be serving Him. He wants them to be enjoying the Christian life. He wants them to be happy and excited because they have the Savior, Jesus Christ, and He's coming back to pick them up one day. That's what he wants. God don't want his children complaining all the time. God doesn't want his children watching the news and everything that's going on and make you sad and, 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 and uh, say things that you shouldn't be saying. God doesn't want the world to be direct in our life. God wants to direct our life through his word. That's why I preach this morning. He goes on to say in verse 7, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Other words, it's saying, If you ask anything according to my name, to my will, it will be done unto you. He has offered a broad spectrum of things for not only this life, but the life to come. But we have to do it according to His will. When you pray, my friend, Somewhere in your prayer, it's got to be said that you have received it from His Word. It's got to be according to His will. Or He's not going to bless the effort. He's not going to hear it the way it needs to be done. It's got to be according to His will. Sometimes that makes change, you see. Sometimes we have to change some things in the home, some things on the work site. Some things in the family. Sometimes we have to make changes in order to please God. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to do that? God expects it. He'll have it no other way. How about you? Here is my Father glorified. That should be the most important thing for you and me. To know that our Father in heaven is glorified. Okay? He doesn't just get glorified. He is glorified in the way that you and I live. The things we say and the things we do. How we serve Him. That's how He's glorified. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Now brethren, it starts with this. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. starting with verse 16. Paul's letter to the church at Galatia, he wrote this letter because they knew that they needed it. Okay? They were practicing the works of the flesh. And they needed to change from that. And if he hadn't told them, if he hadn't, hadn't scolded them, and if he hadn't preached and teach it to them, they would not have changed. And therefore they would stand before God on judgment day, having nothing to say but to be cast into the lake of fire. Paul didn't want those people to go to that place. That's why he, had this, he wrote this letter. 
Paul wrote this letter in prison. These letters were sent by other faithful evangelists whom he gave give them to. And they not only read it themselves, but they read it to all the congregations. They made sure that these letters got to every Christian. And they were read to them because they were inspired by God. In verse 16, Paul said, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. It's a fight to study God's Word. It's a fight to pray. It's a fight to do what the Bible says. The devil is hitting us, attacking us in every way. The world is attacking us in every way. Brothers and sisters, we don't, we don't need to help the devil do that. You see, we need to be fighting against the devil. And the way we do that is by studying God's Word. Our lives should be changing as Christians. There should be change in our life. Our God should be seeing change in our life. It says in verse 17, verse 18, but if ye be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, or are made known, which are these. Now listen. These are some sins that each of us may have been involved in before we were baptized into Christ. And much more so, now that we're baptized in Christ, these sins should not be there should not be present in our, in our lives. And if they are, then we need to make repentance towards God and change from it before it's eternally too late. Adultery. Adultery is when a husband or wife go out with another man or woman. Adultery is also when the husband and wife do not keep their marital vows. Fornication, sex without marriage, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, which is worshiping other gods, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies. And I pick on witchcraft because you and I as Christians should not be involved in witchcraft in any form. It displeases God. It's an abomination unto God. And I pick on two things. Those things that we find in our newspaper, our horoscope. My friends, that's witchcraft. And God's people should not be involved in it. And when we go to the China restaurant and we get those little uh, messages with the cookies and it tells our fortune, that's meddling in witchcraft. God's people should not be doing that. We have the truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we should be doing. We should be staying away from that. We should be afraid of that. We should hate that because that's the devil working to destroy Christians' lives. If you're not growing and maturing in your faith, you might stop and take a look at your life and see why. Envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Now this is the important part of what I'm talking about. As I have also told you in time past, okay, he's already said it once, they are without knowing it. They which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, when we play around with those things I just talked about, we will not inherit the the kingdom of God. We will not be a part of it. It will cause us to lose our eternal life with Jesus someday. That ought to scare us enough to stay away from it. But it goes on to say in verse 22 as I wind it up here. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, 
Okay? Not just love, but joy, peace. You only have peace in Christ, no other way. Long-suffering, that means we hold on, we persevere. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against us there is no law. As a Christian today, my friend, the basics, the very foundation of our Christian life should be made up of these. We should be growing and maturing our faith so that when we read these here uh, lists of uh, characteristics, we should be able to find them in our lives. And the world, when they look at you and me, they ought to be able to see that in our lives. That's what God wants our lives to be like. Is your life like that, Christian friend? If not, it's not God's fault, it's your fault. You're the one who needs to do something. You need to repent. And you need to turn away from what you're doing, turn to God and do it His way. That's what the Bible says. Verse 24, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and lusts. Yes. If you're a Christian, you've been buried with Christ in baptism, you've crucified the flesh. You've crucified all the wicked deeds that we had in our life. You have done away. You have crucified it. You have put it to death. It's dead. It should no longer exist. And because you've done that, we've taken on that new life. That new creature in Christ. That new life that God gave us. More like Christ. Because when you look at Jesus, whether those people back then when He walked the earth, what they seen, and what you and I find in the Word of God about Jesus, I'm telling you, Galatians chapter 5 and 22 shows that that's the way that He lived. That is Jesus, the characteristics of Jesus. What about you and I this morning? Are we living as close to the Lord as we need to be? Are we making changes in our life? So that we can. And when we talk to people about the Lord, about the church, what are they hearing? And what are they seeing? The Bible says, the love that we have one for another as Christians, the world will know that you're the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. How are you loving your brothers and sisters in Christ? How you're loving your brothers and sisters of Christ is the way the Lord's seeing you or the world is seeing you. That's what they're seeing. How about us this morning as the Lord's church? Do we have changes we need to make? If there is, you need to repent. This morning, if you're not a Christian, the Bible says you need to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. By believing that message, one repents of their sins. Repentance is a change of mind and conduct toward the way that you're living and you turn towards God. The Bible says one must be baptized by immersion to have their sins washed away and to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Not to help you speak in tongues and do miracles, but to help you live a faithful life unto Jesus and His Word until the end. Or until Jesus comes back. If you are a Christian this morning, I can't stress this enough. If you're not living the way the Bible says, the way we have just read, that's sin, my friend. Sin will separate us from God and will separate us from God for all eternity. But praise the Lord, He made provision for the Christian. Now, we don't have to be baptized again, but He said we need to repent need to repent. The Bible says, 1 John 1, 9, If we will confess our sins to Jesus, He is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And my friend, that's good news.
Jesus, he will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of Christ my Savior.